and where you can get to. That's the essence. All we need is one man or one woman to get this message. The whole world will be turned upside down. Amen. The world did not need 50 disciples. They had only 12. Mighty means power. Valor means brave. And he was none of them. Because he had been conditioned by his family. Many people have been conditioned by their word. Families. The things our parents have said to us that we are and are not and cannot do and cannot have and cannot be and where we cannot go. Whenever you say, close that door. Whenever you say to your children, they are rich and we are poor. They are rich and we are poor. Whenever you say to your children, they are rich and we are poor. They can live in that place, but we cannot live in this particular place. I cannot send you to that school because that's for the mocker mocks. That means we are the darker ducks. Whenever you tell your children there are some things we cannot have, immediately you are painting a picture. Li putting lids on them, limits on their imagination. I cannot send you to that school because that's for the mock and mocks. So that child grows up knowing we are the darker ducks. And we do it unintentionally, but it, is, it still has an effect on our children. These are things that we cannot afford. Only those in my devil can afford it. So the child grows up thinking where he lives is, is, uh, is among the poor. They can never go. So even as he's growing up, he never attempts to cross the river Thames to go to the other side. Every limitation on your life by this acquisition of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is totally broken. I said it's broken over your life. I said it's broken over your life. So that's what Gideon's parents did to him. His conclusion was, my family is the least. That's him talking. My family is the least. The angel was announcing the reality of this man, and Gideon was responding with what he learned of himself, probably from his parents and from his community. So this was a mental conditioning. It's time to go back to your future, who you are, your origin, and you only get that from God. You are hearing this from God. God is renewing your mind. It doesn't matter how you were conditioned when you were growing up. We grew up in a family of not enough or just enough. We broke the limitation. I said we broke what? The limitation because he told me for the first time he spoke to me, Joshua 1.8. That's been my cardinal scripture. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. So that's what you say. That's shall meditate on it day and night. That's what you think. And observe to do, not observe to quote. So that's your lifestyle. Then ye shall make thy way prosperous. And you shall. So he gave me the formula for prosperity and success in 1984. Despite my in total, your history. Psalm 139, 14 to 18. Who is discovering who they are? Shout no more limits. Psalm 139, 14 to 18. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knows right well. My substance was not hid from you when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance. Watch the psalmist speaking. Yet being unperfect, being unperfect, and in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. God is not thinking evil about you. Are you paying attention? How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sun. When I awake, I am still with you. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I will praise thee, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My substance, what used to make me, was not hid from you when you were making me. I was curiously wrought. 
curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. And your eyes did see my substance. What you used to make me, your eyes saw it. So I'm not rubbish. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Third defect that people use. Depression. 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 One of the reasons why we don't accept our leadership spirit is some love depression. Some love it. Depression. Attention seeking. Another word for depression is pity party. Self-pity. We find justification for our state of lack. We say to ourselves, I deserve nothing. Elijah was one of the most depressed men. Now, everybody hears Elijah today, and everybody sees Elijah as a hero. But Elijah started as one of the depressed. Even when he was ending, he was depressed. Yet, <laughs> they say he's the, the, they describe him as Elias. The one who killed the 400 prophets of Baal. Nobody remembers Elijah's depression today. They remember how his, his feats, his accomplishments, how outstanding he was. From this day, they won't remember your depression anymore. They won't remember your leads anymore. They won't remember your backs anymore. They won't remember the low self-esteem you started with. Self-discovery. Elijah was one of the most depressed men, yet we consider him to be one of the greatest leaders in the Bible, the one who called fire from heaven. He killed the prophets of Baal. This man was awesome, yet he was a depressed man that after such a feat, he ran away from a woman, Jezebel. Tell somebody there's hope for me. A woman threatened to kill this mighty man of God, and he went into hiding. He said to God, you know something, kill me. He had a suicidal spirit. Elijah. The great Elijah had a suicidal spirit. He went and hid in a cave and God asked him, what are you doing here? He, he was commanded to get out of that cave. He contemplated suicide because he was hugely depressed and discouraged. Yet, he did not cancel God's calling on his life. Amen. Shout, I hear, sir. I hear, sir. He did not cancel God's calling on his life or assignment. So, always remember this and write it down. It's coming up on the screen. Depression does not cancel your leadership capacity. You need to cancel that depression. Depression does not cancel your leadership capacity. You have to cancel that depression. So, don't allow depression to cancel your destiny. You cancel the depression. So, your destiny is not canceled. Am I talking to somebody here? Depression does not cancel. The fact that you are depressed does not make God change his mind that you are depressed or so can't use him again. No. Depression does not cancel your destiny. It doesn't cancel your leadership capacity. You need to cancel that depression so you can fulfill destiny. Amen. Somebody say, I cancel it. I cancel Somebody it. say, I cancel it. I cancel the fourth defect that some had was oppression. Oppression. People from our community are known to use this particular one to justify their laziness. Oppression. We are oppressed, oppressed by them people. How long are you going to say them people kept you down? They colonized and oppressed you. How long are you going to use this? It was Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of the late President Roosevelt, who said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. No one can make you feel inferior without what your consent. Irrespective of what you're going through, Nobody can make you inferior without your approval or consent or stamp. People can stop you temporarily, but they cannot stop you. But you are the only one that can stop yourself permanently. Your history is not the issue. It's what you do with the history. That's why we're giving you examples of all these great people who when we mention their name today, everybody jumps. Everybody gets excited. 
Yet they had all these issues, but God waived it and still gave them an outstanding life. That shall be your testimony. Joseph was born into slavery. His brothers were envious of him. He was sold into slavery to make sure his dreams died with him. <laughs> Talk about oppression. But the Bible says something happened to Joseph most probably whilst he was a teenager. Bible says Joseph had a dream. You see, a dream changes your perception of yourself and makes you oblivious unaware of or paying no attention to something. It makes you oblivious of what people say. A dream makes you oblivious to what people say or think about you. A dream intoxicates you and helps you focus and de-emphasize on what does not matter. A dream makes you oblivious to what people say negatively about you. A dream makes you focused. It helps you to major on the majors and minor on the minors. Your obsession with your dream makes you major on the majors and minor on the minors. The same Eleanor Roosevelt was the one who said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. You see, a dream, a dream, and I'll talk about dreams a little bit now. You need a dream. You need what? A dream. Write this down. Your